What's up guys, we're back today with some NFL content, but don't worry, my MLB picks for today are in the pinned comment below and also in a community post every single day. In this video, we are going to break down each team in the AFC West and I will give you my early week one bets for their games. Before we jump into these breakdowns, do me a big favor and hit that like button guys. It only takes one second and helps out the channel a ton. If you like these videos, go ahead and subscribe. It's 100% free and can notify you about new videos and any time that we go live. Our videos are sponsored by stumpthespread.com. Click the link in the description to go over there and join our free email list and check out our top confidence plays on all the major sports including nfl preseason content get in there guys for maximum value comment below with what you think about these teams or anything you see coming for this nfl season or any questions you have about the mlb games for today we respond to every single comment so let us know anything you want to say about my picks these videos or anything you see here now let's take a look here at the denver broncos denver comes into this season with the second year here of sean payton the biggest thing for a team that finished five and 12 last season and missed the playoffs is finally the departure there of Russell Wilson. Feels like a huge win for this team getting him out of there. I mean, we're going to see Bo Nix coming in here. He's going to be an extremely exciting guy to watch. Uh, we've got Stidham also in there competing for this job. Sean Payton is getting to build a completely new offense and a new quarterback of the future here, exactly the way he wants them to play, the way he wants this offense to be. So it should be very, very interesting for a coach that definitely has the respect of the league and over the course of his career has done some great stuff with some quarterbacks. So there's not a lot of great looking offensive options on the team and with a rookie quarterback and no backups that I'm excited about this is an offense with way more questions than answers for this season but plenty of hope for uh, you know plenty of hope plenty of reason for optimism down the road for this unit obviously I'm not expecting a whole lot out of the Denver Broncos offense this season no doubt about that I don't think they're going to be amazing not trusting the passing game not trusting the running game like this is a rebuilding season here for Denver but I think this is the absolutely correct direction for this team at the moment so looking at their defense we got coordinator Vance Joseph leading the way not a lot of good things happening to this team on the defensive side of the ball and as Sean Payton continues to rebuild this roster there are going to be lots of growing pains and losing Justin Simmons and not filling his place is not helpful and we could see this defense ending up in a lot of tough spots as a rookie quarterback tries to find his way potentially so yeah not expecting great things for this defense either just not expecting great things for the Denver Broncos this season I don't think that's any big question or any big secret guys that's what we should expect obviously weirder things could happen at People weren't expecting the Houston Texans to be as good last season, but I think this is a team that's way farther down the rung than even Houston was last season. And while we could see some crazy exciting things happen in the emergence of young talent for this squad, that would all be great. But I think that's something that's going to be more great for this team in terms of down the road success than actual success this season and for a team that should honestly be probably trying to tank things out here and acquire a nice high draft pick once again. So we'll see what we get from them this year. We'll also see what we get from uh, them here in week one going up against the Seattle Seahawks who yeah it's Denver at Seattle and Seattle is minus four and a half or all the way up to minus five and a half out there so yeah we'll see what transpires here we've got an over under of 42 and a half so definitely uh, the odds makers are expecting not a lot of offense in this game uh, generally speaking we're seeing a little bit of troubling news out of Seattle I mean we've already seen Geno Smith injury question mark so we'll see what actually uh, you know what Seattle's putting on the field for this game we'll see who Denver decides to start in week one but generally guys I'm leaning more to towards Seattle in this game. I don't think we're going to see Denver keep it close. The Seahawks actually have an underrated offense that can put up some pretty crazy numbers. I don't know how good the Seattle defense is going to be necessarily, but I don't know that that will matter too much going up against a Denver Broncos team that's likely to be running a rookie or a backup level quarterback out there, and they really have no major offensive weapons to speak of. So yeah, guys, go ahead and give me Seattle minus four and a half in this one. In terms of the over-under, I think you could possibly take a look even at the under to be honest I mean I don't think we're gonna see Denver score very many points there in game one even against the Seattle mediocre defense so yeah my very small lean in this one is Seattle minus four and a half so so let's just go ahead and move on to a team that is pretty much the opposite of the Denver Broncos now we've got the Kansas City Chiefs the defending Super Bowl champions absolutely crazy run there through the playoffs last year Andy Reid Patrick Mahomes they're one of the best duos in sports right now it feels like this team looking pretty much unstoppable right now I mean assuming they get to have all their pieces available for the start of the season this offense is even looking better I would say much better than they did a year ago when they won the freaking Super Bowl guys I mean Mahomes and Kelsey seem locked in for the season and with 
big additions through the draft and the emergence of Rasheed Rice, there really is no ceiling for this offense. I could see, I could see all kinds of crazy stuff, honestly. I could see them being around the same level as last year. I don't think that's impossible, but we could see this being a crazy high-powered offense, guys. I mean, Mahomes is a monster. We know that. Kelsey could have something of a renaissance, although he's getting a little bit older. Not super old, but a little bit older. But yeah, there's some actual talent here in this wide receiver core. And if they've got all those drops out of their system from last year and can, you know, find some consistency. I think we get to see Mahomes definitely very much in the MVP conversation and this looking like one of the best offenses in the National Football League. The running game should also be totally fine, guys. We've got Pacheco and Clyde Edwards-Hilaire out there. So yeah, this team, they should be able to run the ball. They should be able to pass the ball. There really should not be any significant weaknesses here for the Kansas City Chiefs offense. I think the offensive line is going to be fine. And even if it's not, Mahomes is an absolute wizard in evading rushes. And yeah, he just looks like he can do no wrong out there on the field. Not expecting any regression from him not expecting any regression at all from this offense i think their absolute floor is how good they were last season and i think the ceiling is there's no ceiling guys this is going to be an amazing offensive unit so we'll see what the defense can do in support of that offense we've got steve spagnolo running it back out there he is one of the better defensive coordinators in the nfl in my eyes the chiefs going to be missing sneed that is a big loss to absorb there and gonna have to do something to shore up the secondary there is hope that trent mcduffie could be taking on some of the challenge of you know guarding opponents you know wide receiver ones out there and he could do a good job i don't think he's going to be as good as sneed was a season ago so that's definitely a concern for a team that definitely has Super Bowl aspirations. We've got Willie Gay Jr., him leaving. That is a big problem as well. But this defensive line should be generating some pressure. And the hope is that enough pressure will kind of cancel out the possibly questionable secondary the Chiefs could be dealing with this season. But, you know, that's a big deal. Uh, Mahomes and company could end up in a lot of shootouts this year. Not exactly where they want to be. I think they'd be rather running the ball through the regular season at least, you know, a good amount. And then maybe they can lean on that passing game a little bit more in the playoffs. But, man, in the playoffs, if you've got a bad secondary, there's going to be all kinds of guys on the other side willing and able to take advantage of that. So we'll see what they can do on the defensive side of the ball. Obviously, guys, I'm expecting very, very good things from the Kansas City Chiefs this season. Week one, opening night game for them on Thursday Night Football. It's the Ravens going on the road to Arrowhead to take on the Chiefs, who are minus three in this game. I think we're going to see a lot of public money here on the Chiefs minus three, you know, assuming nothing weird happens between now and that game. But overall, guys, is this a spot that I really want to slam it on the Chiefs at, plus, at minus three? Uh, it seems a bit tough. Obviously, a lot of hype around them coming into this season, and I'm expecting good things from them, so don't get me wrong. I'm definitely thinking the Chiefs are going to be a good team, but minus three seems a little bit rich, although taking Mahomes as a field goal or less of a favorite at home does seem appealing. I feel like there's a chance they get the job done here in this game. So that's kind of a toss up for me in terms of the side and in terms of the spread there. In terms of the over under for this one, 46 and a half points. That is a lot of points, but I think we're going to see two pretty high powered offenses here. The question for me is how good is that Ravens defense going to be? Is Mahomes really going to be able to go nuts against that defense? They could be pretty good this year, guys. No doubt about it. An over under of 46 and a half going to need a good amount of offense. And in game one of the season, who's going to be more on their toes, guys? Are the offenses going to be firing on all cylinders against unprepared defenses or are the defenses going to have the upper hand? It's a big question mark. I don't really have a huge lean in this one, guys. Maybe a slight lean here towards the over with both teams finding plenty of offensive success. But yeah, not a huge, not, not like hugely convinced on this game so far. Obviously, we'll have a solid lean on this one coming up to game time. Definitely with premium content on this game. But we'll just have to wait and see, guys. We're a little bit too far out to be locking anything in yet. Next up, guys, we're looking at the Las Vegas Raiders. They didn't have the season they imagined last year going 8-9, and nine, but yeah, some coaching turmoil, but it seems like they've got things figured out now. Seem pretty happy with Antonio Pierce at the helm. Uh, an offense led by either Garner Minshew or Aiden O'Connell at quarterback kind of unlikely to have a great time guys they've got one of the best offensive weapons in the nfl kind of just hanging out there in Devonte adams we could see him getting more and more frustrated last season and it seems like they could be in for another struggle of a year i can't imagine him being stoked about either one of those starting quarterbacks once you played with aaron Rodgers, i would have to say that Minshew or o'connell probably feels like just a little bit of a downgrade and this is not a guy that seems content to wait around if you guys watch that very solid uh wide receiver show there 
there on Netflix. Excellent watch there. Loved that. Devontae Adams definitely seems like a guy that is committed to being in you know, the competition at the highest, highest level. He's going to want to be competing for Super Bowls, and I don't think I see that in the future this season for the Las Vegas Raiders. So we'll see how that entire uh, you know relationship goes. According to Antonio Pierce, the Raiders are going to be a running team, like a running-focused offense, which makes sense given their quarterback situation, but this is not necessarily a running back core that I'm super high on with no Josh Jacobs as he is now playing for the Packers. So yeah, not, not really super high on this offense, not really super high on their plan. I would think the plan needs to be to get Devontae Adams the freaking ball as often as he possibly can, but that's going to be pretty tough with opposing defenses definitely able to double team him anytime they feel like it. So we'll see what we get from this offense. Not expecting miracles. We'll also see what we get from this defense, guys. Led by Patrick Graham, the defensive coordinator. We've got Max Crosby. He's going to be the defensive monster out there. I mean, he's one of the most intense linebackers in the NFL. And yeah, there's going to be a lot of pressure on this defense, I would guess, given their quarterback situation. But we'll see. Adding in guys like Christian Wilkins and the continued improvement of Malcolm Kuntz all make this Raiders defense a much better team than you would maybe think. Uh, are they going to have a good time on offense this season? Is this defense going to get put in you know, like good positions? Are they going to be in situations where they can succeed? I don't know, guys. It might be more on them to put the offense in situations where they can succeed. And this defense is definitely capable of that at times. I don't think they're going to be a bad defensive team by any stretch. But, man, uh, it seems a little bit like there could be a rough season on the horizon here for the Raiders. So we'll see what actually ends up happening out there. Uh, in terms of their Week 1 matchup, guys, they're going on the road to take on the Los Angeles Chargers. And the Chargers are minus 3 in this game. The Raiders, if they're trying to play that ground and pound style that they want, this could be a decent chance to try to work that in, but there are some monsters over there on defense for the Chargers, so we could see, uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, I'm leaning probably more towards the Chargers minus three in this game, although everybody is, you know, high on, you know, people are excited at the beginning of the season, so probably a lot of Raiders fans will feel like they have a chance in this one, and I can't argue with them too much here in week one. We also don't know who we're going to see as the starting quarterback, like at least not 100% sure who's going to be the starting quarterback there in week one for the Raiders. So still a lot of information to find out as this quarterback, you know, not quarterback controversy, but this quarterback competition plays its way out. So generally speaking, leaning towards the Chargers minus three. And in terms of that over under a 42 and a half, I think there's plenty of reason to take the over in this spot. But yeah, once again, guys, we got to see what's going to happen. We're hearing lots of things about how both of these teams are going to try to run the ball. We'll see what actually happens though, because historically speaking, you hear that a lot and then you see what actually happens when, you know, the, the game actually starts. So yeah, small lean towards the Chargers minus three and a small lean towards the over. Last but not least here in the AFC West, guys, we're looking at the Los Angeles Chargers. They have very exciting, very tumultuous offseason. We've got Jim Harbaugh now at the helm for a, a team that, you know, it's, it's Harbaugh's first season back in the NFL. The Chargers went five and 12 last season, missed the playoffs, lots of injuries out there. Justin Herbert just couldn't stay healthy. Felt like the guy was just getting killed on every possession. Like, just felt like he had no protection out there. He tried to play through injuries. Like, he looked tough. He's getting a bag, guys. He's getting a huge contract. So, yeah, expecting good stuff this season from Herbert as long as they can keep him upright. And it seems like they took a big step back, though, in terms of the offensive weapons, guys. I mean, they lost Keenan Allen and Mike Williams. So a lot of faith here being placed on Harbaugh to revamp this entire offense and get the most out of Justin Herbert. I think he's one of the most talented pass makers in the NFL. The dude's got all the arm talent in the world. Seems like he's got a good head for the sport, like a good head for the position. So expecting good things from Herbert, although, man, it doesn't feel like he's been putting in necessarily the best chance to, you know, the best place to succeed. The offensive line at least should be better and that in itself, just that alone could make a huge difference for Herbert, who, yeah, I mean, all those, the, man, those, the hits that poor guy took last year, it was tough to watch at times. And Edwards and Dobbins in the backfield could be a big help as well. I do think this could be a team that's actually capable of running the ball this season, and that would be a huge help to take some pressure off of Herbert. You know, you've got those opposing defensive linemen just teeing off, knowing you're going to pass it every down. It's a lot harder on them if they have to be keeping an eye out for running plays. So yeah, generally speaking, I feel a little bit worse maybe about this offense in terms of the weapons they have available, but a little bit better about them in terms of their offensive line. So we'll see what we get from this defense in this season, guys. We've got Jesse Minter coming in. It's his first season. He was brought in by Harbaugh, so a Harbaugh guy. The Chargers were 24th in the NFL on defense last season, so lots of room for improvement there. They've got plenty of talent out there and guys like Joey Bosa and Cahill Mack. Dudes that any team would love to have. So I'm expecting good stuff from this offense, or this defense, guys. They should be able to generate plenty of pressure on opposing quarterbacks, which is obviously a huge, huge deal that can cover up so many deficiencies. If you can just pressure the quarterback, guys, 
things can look very, very good. The secondary also looks like it should be decent, guys. We've got Asante Samuel Jr. and Derwin Williams Jr. out there, and that side of the ball for the Chargers is looking just fine, guys. I'm not expecting anything bad from this defense. Obviously, last year, maybe they lacked a little bit, but yeah, I mean, under Harbaugh, bringing in his own guy like Jesse Minter, I think is going to do well with this unit, and overall, I'm expecting very good stuff here from the Chargers defense. I don't know if they're going to be one of the best defenses in the NFL, but I definitely think they're going to show a lot of improvement, a lot of improvement improvement this season. So in terms of their, you know, their opening game for the year, their week one matchup, we've got the Ve the Vegas Raiders going on the road to take on the Chargers. Chargers are minus three in this game. Seems like uh, maybe a slight overreaction to take the Chargers minus three, but guys, I don't hate it. I think we're going to see Harbaugh hit the ground running here. I think we're going to see Justin Herbert back healthy out there and even missing two of his favorite passing targets, guys. I think Edwards and Dobbins running the ball will definitely help. And will they be able to run it against the Raiders? That might be a little bit tough. The more I think about this game, guys, I am leaning slightly towards the Chargers minus three, but I think there's some reason to take under 42 and a half as well. If both teams really are going to try to run the ball, we see kind of a lack of, you know, talent at the wide receiver core for the Chargers and a lack of talent at the quarterback position, very likely there for the Raiders. So yeah, under 42 and a half seems like a reasonable lean as well as the Chargers minus three. That's everything we have for the AFC West, guys. Hit the like button for good luck on all of your bets and subscribe to the channel if you're new. Let me know in the comments any NFL questions that you have. And don't forget to check out the community post and the pinned comment for my daily MLB predictions. Thanks for watching. You can click the link in the description to check out stumpthespread.com, and we'll see you guys tomorrow for more sports betting action.